This for me, I was talking to some Ivy schools. Actually, Coach Turin recruited me to Columbia, and he was one of the coaches I really connected with, so I was glad when I came here, he was here too. What What are you majoring in, and kind of what are your uh, post-football career goals? So I'm currently majoring in real estate and urban analysis, so I want to eventually get into commercial real estate, either as a developer, in a brokerage, or whatever. I'm still trying to figure that out right now. I got a little bit of time, thankfully, but in the end, that's what I want to do. I want to hopefully either move back to Cleveland, stay in Columbus, but I just want to get into a good market so I can help make myself some money. How valuable do you think being a part of his program, Real Life Wednesdays, all of that has been for you and kind of setting you up for the rest of your life? Oh, it's life-changing. I mean, it's I, you don't get this anywhere else. You really don't. It's like you look around and people are people at other schools. I got people down at ECU. I got people that I know uh, at Notre Dame, Liam Eikenberg, and they, they, I mean, those places set you up too, phenomenally, but just having people come in, like the uh, American Express CEO and people like that, I mean, Phil Knight, you don't get opportunities like that unless you come to a place like this. You've been on the second team offensive line, it looks like, this spring, kind of, what, what's the spring been like for you so far? Uh, it's been a little different. It's my first time playing guard, so I'm kind of transitioning to that, and uh, played a little bit in camp last year, but I've mostly played tackle since I've been here, so it's been a little bit of a learning, a little bit of a learning curve, but it's coming along not too bad. What are the toughest parts of that transition? Staying low. I, I've, I've been known to play high my whole time here, so staying low and getting out of the pads with people like Davon and BB, but BB's obviously not out here, thankfully a little bit, um, <laughs> as I'm trying to learn it, but he... Uh, but just trying to stay low and get under. I mean, you got when you're moving. Uh, when you're moving Chase Young, he's a little bit taller, so it's a little bit easier to get under him. But when you're moving Davon or Teron Vincent, they got a lower center of gravity. You got to really work to get below. Being a fifth-year guy, do you view yourself now as somebody who can be a leader in that offensive line room and kind of show the younger guys along? I'm trying to. I mean, I'm just. I'm. I, there's leading by example. There's leading vocally. Myself, Josh Bowen. We're all Josh Myers. We're all kind of taking. We're all taking it. We're all not used to this because we've had, we had Jamarco and Billy, and we just have to step up, and that's what we're working on right now in the spring as it's unfolding, is just becoming leaders, becoming vocal leaders, showing them Matt Jones, showing Ryan Jacoby, showing Max Ray how we need to do it so that we can be successful like the Lions were in 14, 15, 16. I know that you uh, went to high school with Draymond as well, too. What was it like kind of going through, you know, four years together here with him and now see him going off to the NFL? It was awesome. I mean, it was crazy. I looked at him. We looked at each other after the uh, Rose Bowl. We're like, first time in eight years, we won't be on the same team. I'm so happy. I couldn't be happier for a person. He's the most humble guy I know. I couldn't want anyone else to succeed more. What would you tell an NFL team if they're thinking about drafting Draymond Jones? Why should you draft this guy? Just look at his tape. I mean, the kid works as hard as anybody I know. He's quick. I mean, look at Michael Bennett. That's kind of I was, I was watching, and he's the same size. He's he's just and he's so quick off the ball. You know, he can t anticipate. His hands are really well. That's that's all you really got to look for. That's what that's what makes Miles Garrett so good. That's what makes. I mean, I'm a Browns fan, so that's who I'm kind of looking at. But I mean, that's what it's all hand placement and hand work. And he's I think he's the best pass rusher. So you the hope draft. maybe the Browns will make a move. I wouldn't, for him. Mind, I wouldn't <laughs> mind that. That'd be pretty cool having him back up in Cleveland. Um, can you just walk me through? how you found out about the scholarship, when you found out about the scholarship, and when you called your parents and told them about the scholarship, <laughs> what their reaction was. So I I was sitting in the training room actually after a workout, and uh, Coach Mascuda came up to me and said, hey, Coach Dayton to see you in his office. And when I walked in, I walked in there, He's he had the paperwork on his desk, and that's how I'm not a big showy kind of person. Um, so I was like, he, he gave, he's like, hey, this is what this is what you need to do. Here's a scholarship, I appreciate it. And then I went went in the locker room and Jay Sean knew immediately, so he freaked out. And then uh, I actually took a little while, went outside to my car, gave my mom a call and my dad a call. And uh, actually I beat my mom finding out from one of her friends by like five minutes. So <laughs> <laughs> thankfully I did that. When you heard Coach Day wants to see you in his office, like what, what are you expecting to hear at that point? I didn't really know what to expect. I was like, I'm like, all right, well, we'll see what's happening. I, I really wasn't expecting anything like that, and then it uh, it just kind of hit me. It was cool. Oh, my <laughs> God, right here, man. <laughs> Why you king? <laughs> uh, so you are repping with the twos this spring, but you've also been on special teams quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Like, what Was that your con your contributions there? Like, what, what really motivated that? Was it your contribution to the special teams, your work in practice? Like, what, what was it that really inspired them to do that? Um, I honestly don't know. I, 
I mean, I've just been I've been giving it my all since I've been here. I've just been trying to make the team better no matter where they need me, scout team, twos, wherever they need me to go, I'm willing to do. And that's kind of my mentality since I've been here. I was able to make it onto special teams, which was awesome for me, being able to be out there on the field and helping a little bit. So, I mean, as much as I'm, I don't know exactly what went into it, but I I think just my work ethic and stuff kind of led me to it. What was that like being like the first time you went on the field for an actual game? Oh, I was nervous. Brady Taylor still gives me crap about it because <laughs> I was nervous. I wasn't that nervous. When we went to Oklahoma, and whoever number nine was on the team that year was just killing me. I, I was on my butt probably the first three times. And Brady and Evan Lyle let me hear it the entire time, Aaron Perry. So I was just a little nervous. And then towards the end of the year, it got better and better when I went against people. I went against Michigan State, and the Dow brothers were – the next year, and I went. I played at Ignatius. They went to Ed, so it was funny, and we were just going back and forth. So it was definitely awesome, just being able to contribute in any way. How long did it take you to? I mean, you said you were on your butt quite a bit early on. Like, how long did it take before you felt like, okay, like I, I after, can do this? After after Oklahoma, I was like, all right, if I can, if no one can block a field goal on me when against Oklahoma, I, don't, I didn't think anyone else could. So it's just like, and at my position, you're gonna end up on your butt because you're completely spread out. And you're just taking it right in the chest. So it's like, it's just. As long as you don't, as long as you fall over slow, you're doing your job right. <laughs>